The most important key to financial planning is for you to be Hey y'all, Alan here. How is your business doing? Are you ready to jump start it? Whether you're a startup, bootstrapping it, or operating pretty close to the bone, you can energize your business and improve it dramatically by doing some financial planning. When I say financial planning, I mean, have you set any short or long-term goal for your business yet? If you haven't, why not? If you have, how's it going? Has your financial planning improved your business operations? productivity or prospects. This is not one of those tedious, boring, dry talks about doing nonsense stuff that let you check boxes but has no real value to you. To me, financial planning means deciding on the future you want for your business and making financial plans to achieve it. See, on the way to achieving your big goals, you'll have to set smaller ones with milestones just out of your reach to keep you motivated, disciplined, and full of hope for the future. Let's consider the reason why some people don't do financial planning for their small business. One. You have limited financial resources and can just keep your doors open. So for right now, your plan is just stay in business. Two, you have a limited amount of time to spend on things that don't build your business. And this seems like another crazy, boring task. It's boring. Three, you have limited knowledge about many topics, the ones that you need to know about how to run your business properly. So you're not trying to become a master of finance and accounting and also at the same time. Four, you'll start doing financial planning when you have more money, are profitable, and blah, 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 more excuses just like that. Here's the deal. All those things may be true, but if you do financial planning the right way for your small business, over time, those problems will be a thing of the past. See, financial planning helps you to set budgets, goal posts, increase your productivity, eliminate waste, and assess your business performance. All that for something you invest time into creating your vision of your future, and then do a monthly check on how well you're adhering to your goals. On to the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about the eight benefits of doing financial planning for a small business. They are set clear business goals, prepare a blueprint for your future business operations, set a budget, track and measure performances, manage cash flow, raise funds for your small business, stay motivated and committed to your financial plan, and mitigate risk, number eight. Let's look more closely at each benefit. One, set clear business goals. Financial planning is not setting pie in the sky ambiguous goals like, I want to make a lot of money. I want to be profitable. I want a bigger shop. No, you must make clear, precise, definite plans for your business. For example, I want to bring in $20,000 in revenue every month. I want $5,000 in profit every semester. I want a shop that's 1,000 square feet. When you set clear, identifiable business goals, you can assess if you reach your goals. Plus, goals can increase your level of discipline, commitment, and effort to achieve everything that you set in place for your business. Two, prepare a blueprint for your business. If you want to sell more merchandise, you must first figure out how to sell the merchandise you already have in stock. Or perhaps you want to change your inventory sales item or target different kind of customers. My point is you need a blueprint, a plan for how you're going to achieve specific goals and the priority of those goals. Without a plan to follow, you're just wishing for better days, not actively creating them. To get something you never had, you must do something you never done. In this case, financial planning, not winning an NBA championship. The 2013 NBA championship. Three, set a budget. Even small businesses should professionally manage their finances if they want to become big or stable businesses. Professionally managing your finances means setting budgets, tracking expenses, paying your bill on time, and knowing if you're in the red or black. Setting a budget and sticking to it teaches you fiscal discipline and helps you trim the fat from your business. That means not buying extra merchandise just because it's on sale and not giving steep discounts to customers because you're hoping it will show you the appreciation by buying more products and services from you in the future. The budget can include setting monthly or even weekly sums for how much you want to spend on cleaning supplies, utilities, employee wages, store decoration, debt financing, meals at work, business meetings, advertising and marketing, business organization membership and functions. A budget may force you to cut back your expenditures so that there's more money for your business core operation. Conversely, it can also show you areas where you need to spend more money or make better investments. Number four, track and measure business performance. Is your business doing well? Can you tell me right now the exact state of your financial health? Now, do you just feel it or do you have some numbers, some financial documents to back up your assessment of your business? If you're not actively tracking your sales and inventory, you may not be doing as well as you think you are. Foot traffic through the door, clicks on your website, even daily sell doesn't mean much 
unless you're generating enough revenue to pay your bills, reinvest in your business, and put money away for emergencies and hard economic times. So you can use accounting softwares, handwritten ledgers, or a hybrid system to keep track of your expenses, income, sales inventory, and even one-off payments. The goal is for you to be able to track the performance of your business, regardless of whether you're sticking to your budget and the extent to which you're progressing toward your business goals. Moreover, you also want to measure your business performance quarter to quarter, month to month, and year to year. Observing your business over time can alert you to whether your business is growing, shrinking, stagnating, transitioning, or something else. Mark your progress, lack of progress, or even decline, and then you can better understand what is happening behind the scenes of your own business. Number five, manage cash flow. You may have noticed that during certain time of year, month, your cash flow is positive and other time negative. Do you know why? If not, it should because there could be a pattern there. Meaning, there may be things that you're doing that are causing you to have cash flow problems or things you could be doing to reduce or eliminate your cash flow problems. For example, if you tend to carry a lot of accounts receivable during the summer, you have trouble paying your electric bill because you're running your air conditioning night and day, and that could explain why you're having trouble paying your utility bill on time. To fix this problem, maybe you should focus on cash sales, decrease the time you allow customers to pay their invoices, or sign up for a payment plan with an electrical company. It allows you to spread your payments more evenly over the years. In this situation, your goal should be to better match your expenses and income. In the alternative, the solution could be to keep more money in your petty cash, set different budgets for the summer and winter months, and limit how much credit your customer can receive from season to season. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please smash the like button right now and subscribe to my channel to get more tips on financial planning every week. Back to the action. Number six, raise funds for your business. Do you want to expand your business products or service lines? Or perhaps you want to change your offering or re-ramp your operations? No matter what you may want to do to get a loan, crowdfund, or raise funds in some way for elder frame business, that is a step you have to decide on for your business. To raise funds for your business, an investor will need to know how your business is doing, your cash flow, profit and losses, and balance sheets. You'll want to be able to not only explain your finances in a detailed way, but be able to explain your financial plan for your business too. To wow your audience, you'll want to explain how you plan to generate more revenue, the breakdown of your profits, and how you plan to build on your financial success. Essentially, you'll want to convince your investors, business partners, or creditors that your numbers make sense and are reasonable. What if your audience is not convinced by your financial plans for your business? Well, listen to why they doubt your numbers. Use their criticism to fine tune your financial plans and improve your explanation of how you expect to reach your numbers. By doing so, you may increase your chances of success with your next fundraising efforts. Think about it. Number seven, stay motivated and committed to your financial goals. Financial planning may seem daunting in the beginning. In fact, it may be downright depressing. If you're having trouble setting budgets, creating blueprints for success, and managing cash flow, press on. These things get easier over time. But if you work at it, you can gradually develop more discipline, stronger commitment, and be more motivated to achieve these financial planning goals. If you're doing this for the first time, you should set small milestones to keep yourself motivated and engaged in your financial plan. Big milestones are great, but they become tiring and disheartening if they take too long to achieve. Or you cannot achieve in the time that you've given yourself. So to keep you positive, encouraged, and motivated, set small milestones and use them to keep yourself in the game, so to speak. Number eight. Mitigate risks. Your business may be your dream come true. Life's work or side hustle, whatever the case, you'll want to reduce the risk that threatens the success of your business. Financial planning can help you prevent, avoid, and resolve problems that have the potential to derail your business. Things you can do to mitigate risks to your business include hiring employees, laying off employees, increasing your level of insurance coverage, buying business interruption insurance, and having insufficient funds to carry your business through hard time. Financial planning may not eliminate every risk your business faces, but it can help you come up with a number of ways to work around potential problems, or at the very least, minimize the negative consequences of the problems you have to deal with. By the way, that last one was a test. Do not have insufficient funds in your business. If you follow these steps and set a budget, that will never happen to you. So what is the most important key to financial planning? The most important key to financial planning is for you to be realistic. It's great to believe in yourself, 
your business and your future, but you must keep yourself grounded. Make plans that you have a good chance of achieving. This is even more important when you understand that you must make multiple plans for the future. Diversify. You see, you have to be prepared to keep your business afloat during the good, the bad, and the so-so times. For instance, if the economy takes another dive, and people start losing their jobs. Then you may need to scale back your expectation of your revenue projections and plans for expanding your business. Note, no one is saying that your business won't reach its goal. But in trying times, you may need to extend the deadline for thinking of other ways to achieve your business goals. Just remember that like you, your business is alive and must respond to the factor that affects it. Your financial goals should make you stretch and grow. They should force you to leave your comfort zone to achieve them. So let's recap. The eight benefits of financial planning for small businesses are set clear business goals, prepare a blueprint for your future business operation, set a budget, track and measure business performance, manage cash flow, raise funds for your business, stay motivated and committed to your business financial goals, and number eight, mitigate risks. For insight into how to successfully build your business, maintain your books, and prepare your financial statements and understand how to leverage your financial resource, subscribe to my channel. Yes, and please, Smash that thumbs up button if we have given you some value in this video. We'd love to see you again. And if there's any questions or comments that you want to add, please feel free to leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. I promise. Alan out.